the story, we're going to do chapter 14, Nefesh Chaim chapter 14, just to fill the, where we're up to, the first, um, really 11 chapters, in, in different stages, develop this principle of we are B'Tselem and Akim, we're in the image of God, um, and that means that the, the entire creation is responsive to the actions of, of human beings, especially with keeping Torah, Klal Yisrael, um, and then he's now, I mean, he's, I should, that's a little bit of an oversimplification, okay, but that's the first 11 chapters. Chapter 12 then began to start focusing, and he's been shifting and shifting the perspective on this, and chapter 12 began to focus on the power particularly of action. The question he asked is, why, when you got this soul, you know, so elevated and so powerful that it goes all the way up to the image on the kisser covered on the throne in the vision of Yechazkel and so on, why does it need to bring itself all the way down? And he said, well, actions, you began to speak about the power of action, what a physical human, uh, physical action does when it does a mitzvah, or a God forbid not, um, in chapter 12. Chapter 13 began to speak about speech, and chapter 14 is going to speak about thoughts and ideas. And of course, these are going to express different parts of Anashama, different parts of the soul, um, which is going to talk about those relationships and there's, there's parts of them uh, later on. So let's take a look right now in Parak Yadala, chapter 14. So too, the awakening of things that happen above through thoughts, right? It's thinking a lot, but even thoughts, they're all in the physical world. Actions are in the physical world. Emotions are experienced by a being who's got the type of emotions that we have, which are related to physical things, right? Neurons, neurochemicals, all this kind of stuff, hormones. But of course, they can be generated by attitudes. But attitudes themselves, although they seem like they're all from above, and they do express the neshama above, at the end of the day, they are the attitudes of a being in this physical brain with things going on around us, with chemicals floating around and so on. So they're also part of the physical world. But the point is that mindsets and attitudes have a far deeper impact on our relationship with God and ultimately on what happens in the world, even than speech and action. So this is Machshavon, ideas, thoughts. Omar David Amalach, we see that King David says in Tehillim, Lamad Gimel, Hayoitze Yachad Libam, God who forms together their heart, a maven el kol maaseim. Again, he keeps doing this. Is if you listen carefully to the key words, like we listened to Amos right in the earlier chapter, and we listened to all these right that uh, that in chapter thirteen that was it was Amos. So here it's in Tehillim. It's always the same type of phrase that you could just skim over and, and miss the significance of. So you'll say God created us, and He knows what our actions do, right? But that's not what it says. Himaven el kol masem. He understands where the actions go to. And that's always the same concept. The point is that we don't understand where our actions go to. We don't understand the impact of our actions. And this is the theme that's constantly be once you, once you notice this theme, you'll see it in, in Psukim, you'll see it in Chazals, you'll see it in so in the text of the biblical text, in, in the rabbinic writings, everywhere you'll see the same principle. Had it been what we think it is, that just God understands all our actions, it should have said a maven kol maseim. He understands all their actions. Not he understands where their actions go to. Ulamala, uh, Perek base already in chapter 12, we explain this prashnal bechina samai. So we did explain this very concept, this very verse, in terms of the actions that we take. However, if we listen carefully to the same posik, the same verse, we can also understand that it relates to our thoughts as well. Let's see this. The point is like this. You can have two people, right? Every, every action that is, that is sinful, that's a mistake, that violates God's will of the Torah, that such an action uh, causes, as we said, problems in the programming, pro problems blocking the light of Hashem flowing into the world. So two people could do the same thing. And yet, if it was just an automated, you know, religion, or kind of a, just a legal system alone, you do this, you do this, you do this, you don't do this, you don't, then two people doing the same thing. In a legal system, usually, although we'll see the truth is there's an analogy here too, but generally speaking, there's a fixed penalty for speeding or for this or for that. So you'd say, fine, two people do the same thing wrong, right? Two people... Whatever it is, they lie, they cheat, they, 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 uh, you know, who knows what, they, they, they trafe, I don't know what. 
So they do this, but the damage is not equal. Either because one of them is a greater person, and generally speaking, their acts matter. So the analogy in a normal legal system, of course, is that... Uh, is that um, someone who should know better, like a lawyer cheats or something. Whoa, that's much worse. But also, but the much more powerful analogy than a legal system is a relationship. Somebody lies to you, if it's not, a, you know, so fine, that's not great. But if it's your spouse or your business partner, well, that, you know, but especially if it's your loving relationship, they can't trust you. That's devastating. Right. So in, in a similar way, a person who who takes more responsibility for good in the world and generally has elevated themselves to a higher level and they mess up, that is much more damaging for, for the collective relationship between God and man than somebody who, generally speaking, messes up right? or, or, generally speaking, doesn't take a significant role or whatever it is. That's the first way, but that's not the one he's going to focus on here. Um, once we're up to, yeah. So that's one aspect. And it can therefore be even that there are people in the world whose neshama, whose root spiritual primary source is from a different place in, if you like, the inner metaphysical structure than another person. And that means they have more spiritual power. They're more naturally inclined or likely to play a spiritually inspiring role for others. And again, if they mess up, you know, now, whether you can change that position in lifetimes, another whole discussion is, are we born into spiritual powers or is it that we can actually uh, shift it during lifetime? That's not the discussion here. Another subject for another time. Either way, since each person's damaged potential can reach only as high as their actual root of their individual soul, so one person's maximum damage is going to be lower than another person's. Okay, and he quotes now Kabbai Shekasa B'Tikunim. He quotes the Tikune Zohar, Man De Pogam Le Sato Pogam Le Eila. Le Asar Dis Gaza Nishmasa. The damage down below penetrates above based on where the root of the soul is. Okay, he all quotes others. Well, we're going to skip this paragraph uh, here, but it's the same basic point that he's drawing out over here. And where are we yet? So, that, 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 okay, that's idea number one. For Af Shekala Olam Shu Yose Gavayva Nale. Now, it's true that every world we described, especially last time, and we've seen all the way through this concept that reality is iteratively occurring um, in multiple layers. So there's higher levels, lower levels of reality, and so on. And, um, and last time we described the four primary clusters of worlds, of frameworks within which reality can be talked about. And each one's higher than the other. Ein bekoicha oven lifol boi pegam veroshim godl kolkach. Right. Uh, so even though worlds are on different levels and uh, there's a limit to how powerful the damage we do is, um, nevertheless, you could have two people where, where, there's, where the, the sin is, is still greater. What does that mean? In other words, he's saying in the analogy of the of the throne room, if you like, there's only there's only a limit to how we can't go all the way up to the king himself, if you like, right? But nevertheless, somebody whose role is to keep the place clean, so you can't compare. Let's say a visitor comes to the royal palace and drops some litter or messes up, versus the person whose job it is to supervise the palace and make sure it's all clean. They drop something. That's much worse. So in our roles in this world, and this is a very interesting concept in Kabbalah, is that, uh, is that not everybody's role is identical. Right? There's some people who are a very sort of powerful inner dimensional soul is put into the world and its job might, ha might have greater responsibility in a certain sense than somebody else. Now, we can only be judged individually by the extent to which we fulfill our personal potential. But in terms of this person, if you like, generally speaking, should find it easier to do good. And generally speaking, their job is kind of to help others, let's say. Let's say a real tzaddik, a real great person in the world, who's been put into the world primarily with the responsibility of helping others. And they have a natural sense of consciousness 
again, whether it's because they've been put in the world that way or whether because they've earned it, at some point they now have a very clear sense of the power of actions, a very clear sense of their responsibility to guide others to higher levels, etc. And if they mess up, that's like the person in charge of the palace messing up. That's a disaster because their mess up, their mess up is going to lead others to and then the whole thing will fall apart and so on. So that's what he's saying in terms of one level and one sense in which two people can have a um, different level of responsibility. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. How are we going to know our own level of... It's an excellent question, and I think, actually, we don't need to answer that question. The question, just in case anyone couldn't hear it, is how do we know where we are personally in all this scale and spectrum? The short answer is we don't really need to work out the answer to that question, um, meaning we've just got to keep trying to do the best that we can do. And, but that means, that goes back to things we discussed earlier about intentionality, plans. We should take responsibility for our own growth and, where possible, in, uh, impacting others as well. Um, and then, it, it, so for example, we should have a plan. Where do we want to be by next Rosh Hashanah? Every point in the year, we should know where we want to be by next Rosh Hashanah, by the next beginning of the year. Right? We should always know, we should always be thinking each month, what do we want to achieve this month? This week, what do I want to achieve this week? Right? We should be taking responsibility for our growth. What will happen is that naturally in life, some people, if everyone's doing that and growing to the best of their ability, so there's two approaches. At one extreme, you'd say, there's a type of level of tzaddik where you're just born that way, right? And you and I might never reach it, let's say. That's, that's a tzaddik who never even feels connected to the possibility of messing up, right? They're just born that way. It's a gift to the world. Their job is different to the job of people who are born with temptation. If you read the Tanya, the simple way to read it, I think the most natural reading of it is that's how he learns the Raya Mahemna of the Zohar. Others would, at the other spectrum, we have, no, everybody can grow in different ways and, and perhaps could reach different levels. But you'll, we'll know, we'll know, we should be conscious. The point is we should be conscious of where are we, what do we stand for in the eyes of others. So a classical example is the, Ram, the Rambam brings this, is, uh, it was based on the Gemara, is what's called a chilol Hashem, what calls, what's called desecrating God's name. If you stand in the eyes of the public for God and God's will and... and uh, you know, what was once Talmud Chacham, the, the great uh, Torah scholar, teacher, then your behavior, you get angry with somebody, that's a huge desecration of God's name. Whereas a normal person who's just uh, farming in a field, maybe not. But nowadays it could be that any, anybody looks up to you and says, uh, you know, you're the religious one in the family or the community, or you walk around the street with a kippah on the head or whatever. So how can you get angry? You know, so... It's difficult to know, but I think the point that we've got to do is, number one, always be growing. Number two, in every situation we're in, we should reflect upon, given where we are, is this appropriate? Right? What's appropriate behavior given where I am and given the impact I'm having on others and my relationship? Well, I, I may not like it or I like it, but whether I like it or not, there's a sense in which there are others who, who look up to me too. And what's appropriate behavior for me? Right? You know, the, and it will vary from person to person. Thank you. Okay, that's good. Okay, I hope that answered it. <laughs> I was just waffling away there. For... Okay, a pleasure. Okay, a pleasure, good. Next paragraph. But now comes the key that he wanted to get to. So distinction number one may be what level we're on. Distinction number two... Oh, sorry, one sec. Yeah, I don't know if I got to the end of that paragraph. So let's just finish the last sentence. So therefore God will have infinite levels of gradation. Each one according to where their potential root was. Which world and level is it actually rooted in and hewn from, if you like. Okay, but that was the, that's kind of background point number one. 
of where two people can do the same act and it can have a different level of impact. But point number two, which is where he really wants to get to in this chapter, is Even if the two are, are coming from exactly the same point in the inner world and did exactly the same action, nevertheless, that's in, in, in law you may at this point just, that's it, now there's no real way to distinguish in law. But what thought went into it? What was the attitude or idea? Again, you do have this in legal systems. What's the intention? Uh, but here, when both people intend it, still, the key point is because this is the driving force of a relationship. Relationship is much more about what's going on inside. Of course, it's got to be expressed outwardly. Of course, you cannot lie or cheat or anything. But m more than that is what's going on in the head at the time of the action, right? Mitam now, by the way, if you, this is all going to come out much later on in what's the relative uh, proportion of importance to our intention versus our action. One of the things that Chaim Evolution is going to push heavily against is people who say intention matters so much that the action more or less doesn't matter. Right? If you intend, because, you know, in a relationship as well, it's very nice to say, I love this other person. I love them. I love them. I love them. If every time they ask us to do something, we say, no, 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 forget the action. I'm busy thinking about you. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> the thinking has to translate into action. So that's true. But the same action done with a lot of thought and love versus the same action done by rote is not the same action. The action is critical. But it's, it's the action married to the intention, or conversely, somebody messes up, or right? But one person messes up with a real desire to, to hurt the other person. That's their goal. Whew. You can't compare that to somebody who messes up by just because they forgot something, or, you know. So that, in the same way with Aveira as well, what's going on? One person, let's say, was just absolutely... Let's suppose you've got, you got two people... In other situations in life, they're relatively similar. They're both growing strongly in their Judaism. They both started keeping kosher. One has been fasting for a whole day. They've not been able to get access to any kosher food. They've got a headache and they're this and they're that and they're the other. And they figure, you know, I go to the fridge over here and the only food, you know, and their roommate offers them some uh, food that doesn't have a hechsha on it. And they're thinking, it's not pork. It's not this. It's not that, you know, it's probably okay or it can't be that bad and and they take it and the other person turns around and goes do you know what forget this whole god thing i'm angry with god i'm going to go over and grab this food and eat it that's completely different damages in their relationship right they're not comparable that now they are there neither one you know they're, if assuming they're both on the level where they could eat kosher and and go the extra hour or two until they find some food to drink a bit you know whatever exactly it is we're not talking about life and death here then they should both keep kosher, right? There's, there's a violation against Hashem by doing that. But you can't compare the one who was starving and hungry and they thought that they, you know, wrong justification, but to the one who just couldn't, you know, I don't care what you think, Hashem, I'm, I want to show you. It, it's just a totally, one's a rebellion and one's a, I wish I didn't feel this way, you know, type of thing. So, okay. So the damage done is completely different if it's there to wreck the relationship than if, no, I really want the relationship, I just, I, I don't know how to resist the temptation type of thing. One really put their mind into that Aveira they did. So you got another case of, you know, two people uh, stole money. One just did it by being careless and they didn't pay attention to the change being given by the store owner. And one was out there to manipulate the store owner to, no, you've missed out a pound, and they cheated and twisted and hid the money. And, you know, you can't compare that. The more intention there is, the more damage and wreckage there is. And the simplest expression of this that everybody knows is doing a sin, doing an Avera by mistake is not comparable to one that's done intentionally. Right? And that's why the Gemara in Yuma says that the intention, the thought of the planning and the desire behind the sin is, is harsher than the sin itself. Now, if it never comes to a sin, then no, you know, it's not the same thing. But the point is that the, this is what the Gemara means, is in the relationship, it's the person that's around, the thing that hurt me is not that you did something wrong, it's that you you relished it and you planned it and you, you know, that's what you did. You tried to hurt me or you you really went out of your way and put a lot of thought into it. That's what hurts, right? That's what the verse means. The one who formed together their hearts 
the conclusion is who understands where the action goes to, but the opening of the verse was, the opening of the Pasuk was, who formed their hearts. And this is the key aspect. It means, Raya Yachat sees together, Machshavis Libam, the different thoughts of the heart, like Chazal say in Mesechaz Rosh Hashanah, Hamavin El Kol Maseim, and then it goes once, you see, the line that says God understands how far the actions go opens with the, ver- with the words, who forms together people's hearts. Because that's really what impacts the second half of the positive. That's what really, more, almost more than anything else, drives just how far a positive or negative action can go, is what's happening in the heart. So, sees how deeply the thoughts and the heart attach to the actions. And judges each person how intentional was, how what were they thinking and feeling at the time they're doing the action. So, in, in Ecclesiastes in Kahelas uh, 12, 14, it says, Again, he brought this pasuk earlier. All the actions God brings into judgment, I'll call Nelam on everything hidden. Ah, oh, now once again, we're going to take another one of these verses that speaks about how far the action goes and listen very carefully. And we find that there's an important hint about the level of intentionality and feeling. means to say, Apart from the actual act of the of the sin that's done he brings the entirety of the act in order to bring upon it and judge also the concealed part of the action namely the thoughts how and what way were they done at the time of action God God, this is another, the Pasuk in Mishnah and Proverbs, Hashem with wisdom founded the earth, right? Established heaven with, with um, understanding, with, uh, okay, let's say more granular, detailed picture of things. And the data terms of God with his connection to th- ideas. Again, it's just dealing with different words. Chochma, bin al das. Chochma is usually abstract wisdom, the flesh of the idea in general. Bina is usually more about its the specifics that uh, need to, th- th- what it will entail in specific detail, one detail within another, if you like, more practical or more more focused. And then Das is fusing that into a joint plan that, that has the two of them together, the, the passionate vision married to the details. That's what's done. So Kralkan, Kralkan, Der Kralas, Kalolam, this included all the different worlds. Eretz is the middle layer, right? You've got heaven, if you like, just like physically, you'd say heavens when you mean the skies and the universe. Earth, when you mean the earth, and then the, the depths means the seas. So too, that relates also to the hierarchy of the spiritual worlds, the middle world, Shemaim, the higher worlds, and to homos of the Tachtonim, the, the lower worlds. So you've got levels above the human, levels below the human, just like physically we talk that way, so spiritually as well. Amar Bni Ali um right? So, so kind of it says, um, he says in Proverbs, in Mishlei, um, so just give me one sec. Right, so listen to, to, to kind of not let it go from your eyes. Um, so he says, so one second. And, and really also, well, he's going to, he's, well, I'm, I'm going to, he's going to explain each word. What does it really mean? I lose. It's not really just say, don't let it go. It's mu- it's more than that. It's more deliberate than that as we'll see. He's going to explain all this. Okay, Losh and I, and the idea of eyes, why does it talk about, so, so they say you should never lose sight of the fact that God does all this tremendous work for us, but it, tremendous, he applies these attributes to the creation of higher worlds, lower worlds, our world, everything. The I, we find it, eyes often means thought. The Rambam says this, by the way, in, in, um, in uh, the Moran of Uchim, in the Guide for the Perplex, and here he brings an example from Kohelas, Libi Ra'a, my heart saw, which means my heart understood. It's a bit like in English, you say, oh, I see, when you really mean, I've understood, right? <laughs> right? The, the wise person's eyes are in their head, again in Kohelas, right? That means they've understood it. So, fine, so we're talking about understanding, and Yalizu means, right, that it's kind of... Uh, crookedness or treachery or something like that. So what we're talking about is, is that he quotes, not as Umeil is, as Avi Vashem the point is that, Zeshachaz B'ni Chusna V'chamoyl Al-Alamas K 
care about God's creation, care about his inner worlds, care about all this stuff, Hayekarim, these precious things, Shinibri Bahma, the Pasik saying, Do you realize this creation is God has invested, so to speak, so much in it, how much wisdom there is, how much depth there is, how much detail there is in the whole of space-time and in the whole of the inner worlds prior to ours and his Zayashalai please do everything you can to ensure there's no wreckage and damage a rupture with one eye one, one seeing one thought in other words that's no good that's what the Pasuk is saying that's how it all fits together right is that uh, God puts all this there's so much wisdom and so much detail built into the fabric of create creation that which we see that which we don't see and put your heart put your eyes right not to mess up in other words don't let thoughts come in and a single thought can do so much damage a single passionate idea of rebelling against God or hurting another person right the intentionality you know always try to to the best to have the right ideas right thoughts try to work on our inner state of mind and consciousness later on he's going to in, in the set, third section he's going to talk about how mainly by focusing on the oneness of God and removing our own self-centered agenda and every day kind of put God first and and can I, I'm not going to try and control the world, God. What do you want from me? This is really the key. He elaborates on this much more later. Um, I'm going to have to uh, stop over here. Um, but now we're up to the paragraph beginning. Uh, the th- these are going to be these are going to be the three oh, levels of the human. Okay, a big pleasure. See you, Marco. See you, everyone. Bye.